Mm -hmm. Henry Wings hitting. Hey cutie foodies, it's the one and only Sweet Pea here. And today we have a little bit of food from Better Than Philly Cheesesteak and Wings. And that is a restaurant in um, Irvington, New Jersey. And it's right next to Rita's Ice. And so we have a mixture of some um, Alex Lemonade in here and Swedish Fish, which is my ultimate favorite. So we have some french fries, we have some henny um, glazed chicken wings, tame drum, for real. And that sauce is delicious. And we have um, Philly cheesesteak. I still have some drinks <laughs> from KFC. I got a whole bunch. This one is their sweet tea. And then we have some Uptown right here. So I'm going to bite into this cheesesteak before we get started so welcome back to another installment of the 31 days of halloween today we're going to be talking about um the story of peter fabiano and no he did not murder anybody but he was murdered in 1957 on a halloween He just made it too because he was murdered um somewhere. All the articles I've read really doesn't have a specific time, but it's somewhere between eleven and like eleven thirty. It's like before midnight. Mm, pretty good. Um, the other half of this went to my sister. I don't usually talk. Sometimes you see, well, all the time you see these muck, other mukbangers on here. It was a huge spread. You got to get my subscriptions up, my likes up, my views up so that I can do that. So I'm going to do what I can and hopefully you guys like it. If not, you don't have to watch, but I appreciate that you do. Mm. Uh, this is what it's looking like inside. I'm going to drop the damn piece of meat. Get some of these good french fries. And this place is kind of like a chicken shack. If you don't have those around where you're from is basically just a store a storefront that sells chicken wings french fries sandwiches sometimes they sell pizzas banana pudding things like that i'm hungry i ate a little this morning but i usually try to eat once a day but it also depends on how I slept the night before. Mm. 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 And his hand wings hitting. Mm. My sister goes here a lot. And your food is banging. Mm. Like I said before about Bragman's. Y'all live in New Jersey. Stop by better than Philly cheesesteaks and wings. They're on Instagram and Facebook. So look them up and holler at them. And go over there and get you a sandwich. Or some wings in the uptown. Some, um, Mm. Banana pudding. Mm. 
I'm allergic to banana, so I ain't eating that. Well, I have an intolerance to them. It made me very nauseous. So, check them out. Hello. Let's go into today's story. In 1957, picture this. <laughs> um, I think it's called Sun Valley, California. Peter Fabia Fabiano and his wife Betty. had two very successful and lucrative hair salons. A good marriage. I'm not going to say perfect because nobody's relationship is perfect. Um, two kids of which Betty had with a previous marriage. She was um, a divorcee and he had never been married before. And we had met a few years back hmm. after her divorce. Hmm. And got married. Wow. He had two children, a son and a daughter. Uh, um, they all live in this one house in Sun Valley. The son was in, um, I believe it was the Army or the Navy. Which takes us to Goldine Pizer and um, LaBelle. I don't remember her first name. Um, they were um, lovers. And as you can imagine, back in 1957, I don't care where you were, homosexuality was looked down upon even more so than now. There are still people that are bigots, and I mean that in every sense of the word, races, they don't believe in or understand or like the fact that um, people are um, transgender and not cisgender. Um, they don't believe in homosexuality and things of that matter. And back in 1957, being homosexual, whether you were a lesbian or a gay male, was illegal. And punishment, um, you could go to jail for that. And most of the time, too, um, they would send people to um, insane asylums back in that era, even into the 60s and probably the 70s, but I'm not sure. Um if you were homosexual and or if you had an interracial relationship so um rebel I would call her Susie I can't remember her damn first name well we won't call rebel Susie rebel is her last name I just can't remember her first but anyway, after the Fabianos moved from, I believe it was New York, to California and started these hair salons that were successful right off the bat, they hired, uh, excuse me, uh, ooh, Susie. 
who was a freelance photographer to work in one of their salons. And yeah, as the years went on, um, the Falianos and Susie, who was a divorcee, and, um, she, I don't believe she had any children, but um, she was a divorcee, and she got really close with the Fabianos. And so close that when Betty and Peter started having a little marital trouble, Betty moved in with Susie. Now, because there was whispers already about Susie being gay. It was speculation that Mrs. Fabiano and Susie during the time that she was living there was um, in some form of a lesbian relationship with um, Susie, but it's never been confirmed. So, it's just speculation. It's allegations. So, Betty wanted to be back home, or rather, Peter, different articles see different things. Um, Either Peter wanted her back or was willing to take her back and she wanted to go home or Peter was trying to get her back home. Either way, she ended up back home. My sweet tea is good. Let me taste this uptown. Mmm. All right, y'all. I'm gonna have to save this for another time. Been drinking too much, and plus, I want to get into this Reese's because it's melting. But anyway, um, they decided she was. They decided that she was gonna come back home. She went back home to her family, and um. <laughs> and Peter gave her an ultimatum. He would take her back only under one condition. And that condition was mm. lemonade is good. Mixed with the um, Swedish fish. But anyway, under the condition that she would um, cut off all ties with Susie, never speak to her again. She couldn't come to the salon anymore. She couldn't work at, uh, well, she couldn't work at the salon anymore. And she was not to speak of her at all, even in the house. And Betty agreed. So whatever relationship, if any, that she had with Susie, Betty cut it off as per her husband's wishes and went back home to her family. And this in turn, as you can imagine, enraged Susie. And hell hath no fury like a woman scorned. So, in the midst of all of this, ooh, brain freeze, I always heard that you take, instead of pinching right here, you take the tip of your tongue and you press it to the roof of your mouth and it disappears. I probably look like a damn fool, I don't care. But anyway. <clears throat> Oh, 
she um, met Goldine Pizer, who was also a divorcee. And she worked in communications or um, in the medical field or something like that. So, from jump, from gate, from rip, off the top, Susie started talking hella cash shit about Peter to Goldine. And in um, police reports, Goldeen says that she made him out to be a very evil man who was out to destroy everything and everyone around him. He was a vile, evil man, is what she said, Susie said about him. Mind you... Goldie never met him. She didn't know anything about Peter. She didn't know anything about Betty. Never knew the Fabianos or their children or anything like that. She just developed a hatred for him because of the things that Susie was saying to her about him. Gullible as hell. Grown ass woman. they started plotting to get rid of Peter mind you at this time they were in a relationship so the newspapers say Goldine was in love with Susie, but Susie was in love with Betty. And she was determined to get Betty back by any means necessary. So in the months leading up to the crime, Susie took Goldine to both of the Fabiano's salons so that she could um, recognize and get acquainted with and see who um, Peter was because she was going to be the one to kill him. Susie was the mastermind obviously. And that poses the question if you're in love with someone so deeply would you do anything including murder, to please them? Let me know in the comments down below. And be honest. So, they had the plan all laid out and set. And on Halloween night, Susie borrowed a car from her friend. Um, and they took a uh, 38 revolver that they had purchased um, from a store months earlier under the guise of needing it for home protection along with a costume uh, excuse me that uh, Susie bought for Goldeen which was a khaki jacket some blue jeans red gloves um, a little mask sort of kind of like how um, what do you call it Robin would wear um, Batman sidekick and um, some face makeup to like disguise her and I believe a hat. So they drove to the Fabiano's home at 9 p.m. They sat on their block and waited for two hours, over two hours, because like I said, they're not really sure exactly when he was shot, but they know it was um, between 11 and 11.30. that I waited for the lights to go out. As soon as the lights went out, Goldine says that um, Susie told her, go do it now. So instead of her having a backbone and saying, you know, I don't know this guy. I'm not going to do this no matter how evil you say he is. She gets out the car 
walks over to the Fabiano's door, rings the doorbell, and Peter came downstairs to answer the door like any man would do his late at night. Um, Halloween was on a school night, so they weren't expecting any trick-or-treaters to be coming this late. Um, their son had went back to base. Their daughter was upstairs in her bedroom. So he came downstairs and he opened the door and all his wife heard was, isn't this a little late for this? And she heard what she thought was a man impersonating a woman, but she couldn't really hear exactly what they were saying. And then two loud bangs and a thump. So what happened, Peter opened the door. He said what he said. And Goldine, in her nervousness, she had a brown paper bag and she raised it like this as if to give Peter the brown paper bag for some candy because he assumed that she was like a teenager or something or an adult um, dressed up going around trick-or-treating. And um, she had to hold, take her left hand and hold her right hand to keep her hand steady enough so that she could shoot. And she pulled the trigger and shot him directly in the chest. And he bled out, started bleeding out. Betty, hearing the thump, runs downstairs. As she ran downstairs, she heard um, screeching tires because they had already um, gone off. Goldine ran from the porch, jumped in the car, and they sped off. Betty at this point, runs to the neighbor, who is a police officer. He calls it in. More police officers come. They try to rush Peter to the hospital, but he succumbed to his injuries. He was 35 years old. So, flashing back to Goldine and Susie. They parked the car back at her friend's house, mistakenly leaving the jacket in the car and burning the rest of the items, the costume. And Susie gives Goldine a kiss and whispers to her, thank you. And when they're parting ways, she looks at her and tells her, forget you ever knew me. A three-year relationship down the drain in one night because you did something for somebody that they weren't strong enough to do themselves. They wanted to play the puppet master, but she didn't have enough bravado to kill the man herself. At this point, the police are investigating. They have no leads. Um, it was a teenager coming home that night, and all he said was he saw a car speeding off. Um, after, um, you know, the gunshots and everything, but he didn't see who it was. They were obviously in a costume. Hmm. So they started doing some digging into Peter's background because they believed it was like a, um, a mafia hit or something like that. And they found out that he used to be a bookie back in the day, but, um, he straightened his ways um, so he didn't have any um, ties with that anymore. He was totally straight and legit um, with his businesses. So, oh my God. So, he, um, you know, they started looking into other avenues and they found out about Betty and Susie and um, because she had, you know, brought it to their attention. So they brought her in for questioning. They didn't have enough um, evidence on her, so they let her go. And then an employee at a, um, let's just say um, a, a U-Haul or something like that, a storage center, um, calls them because they found a gun in a storage locker, which Goldine still had in her possession after that night, and she purchased the locker to place the gun in instead of getting rid of it. That was her way of getting rid of it. Smart. 
So <laughs> they run the ballistics. They find out that this was the gun that in fact killed him. They bring her in and she's saying, I the worst. So sounds like it's raining. Probably is. It's damn 90 degrees today in New Jersey. The hell. So, um, they were, um, they brought them in. Goldine is singing like a bird. Mm. Mm. Of course, Susie tried to deny it. She's saying she was home all night. She didn't go anywhere. Then her friend was like, oh, wait, she borrowed my car and she drove 37 miles on my car like where did she go and so it was like oh i went to the grocery store and i went back but if that was the case then why didn't you just take your car so um they booked them both on charges of first degree murder and they faced life in prison right before the trial was um, about to begin and mostly because they didn't want in the newspapers about them being unusual or abnormal women is what they called lesbians back in the day they took a plea deal for second degree murder which um, they faced five to um, five years to life in prison anyway um, for their crime <clears throat> Now, this is where the story gets kind of funky because some article said that they spent the rest of their lives in prison and um, Goldine died at the age of 88, I believe, or 83, somewhere in her 80s. Um, some of them say that Goldine got out and then she lived a peaceful life going back into the medical field. And that um, Susie also got out, but then nobody could find her whereabouts <clears throat> after that. And then, um, you know, nobody knows. So let's just say they served their time. Goldine is dead. Susie may be dead. Who the hell knows? Um, Betty, she died in 1999, I believe, at the age of 81. And it's speculated that she never remarried. Um, and they still never got any clues on um, whether or not the lesbian allegations were true. Who knows? Maybe. I mean, she was a 37-year-old woman, and she never got remarried after her husband. But, you know, times were different back then, so we'll never know. It's just all allegations and speculation. Mm. But I'm going to need you... To go to bed at them Philly cheesesteaks and wings. Read this. Mm. Possibly get you some KFC french fries as well. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below. Share this video. And if you have any suggestions or anything that you would like for me to talk about for the 31 days of Halloween. Or if you want to enter in your anonymous story for the Boyfriend Chronicles then you can always email itsweetp87 at gmail.com. That's I-T-S-S-W-E-E-T-P-8-7 at gmail.com. And don't forget to follow me at it's underscore, I did it again, underscore, underscore sweet P at, um, at Instagram. So like and subscribe. That's it for this video, guys, and I'll catch you in the next one.